We built a French cleat screwdriver holder that holds 25 screwdrivers, screwdriver tips for 22 more, and it won't move up and down if you pull on it. Because when you're just trying to get one screwdriver, you don't want to pull the whole rack off the wall. This is our screwdriver holder. Usually we use these, but sometimes you need a good old fashioned screwdriver. You know, like when the zombies come and the power goes out. Well, this screwdriver holder was made out of scraps and it holds 25 screwdrivers plus screwdriver tips for 22 additional screwdrivers. So that's like, 25 plus 22 screwdrivers right here on the wall in this one holder. It was easy to make and we added in additional hardware in the back that keeps it from moving up and down. So I can pull screwdrivers out of here all day long and the whole thing will stay put. It won't come off the wall. One of the reasons I like French cleats so much is because you can use your scrap wood to build this stuff that you're going to hang on the wall. It's one of the reasons why we keep so much scrap wood. <laughs> so how do you figure out where you're going to drill your holes? You just drill them and try it out? No, we steal an idea that I got at a science fiction convention from a main cabinet builder. I was at Dragon Con and they were having this breakout session where they were talking about how to build main cabinets. Those are the video game cabinets that people make. And they were saying, you know, if, you, if your game is going to play Asteroids and uh, Pac-Man or whatever, your controls may be different for different games. So you need to figure out how you're going to lay out your controls or your control panel before you start drilling through wood and, and installing things. And their suggestion was take a piece of cardboard and put your buttons in the cardboard. Try that out. If it doesn't work, throw the cardboard away, get another piece of cardboard and do it. So what I've done here is I've drawn out two and a quarter inch square and then drew an X through it and drilled a hole in the center. So there's five places for me to put screwdrivers. And now I can test out my theory as to whether or not this is spaced properly just by dropping in some screwdrivers. And it looks like it's pretty much what I want. So now I know what my measurements are and I can take my template and trash it because I know my measurements and I can drill. Laying everything out is pretty simple. It's just two rows of holes two and a quarter inches apart. Then connect all those dots with diagonal lines, the X's I was talking about. And those X's will show you where the center row holes need to be. Everything matches. Wow, it's almost like we knew what we were doing. So now I have the board cut and it's marked with all of the places that I'm going to drill for the screwdrivers. So it's ready to go. I've got the drill press set up and I'm using a pretty large drill bit. That's because the largest screwdriver I have in terms of diameter is this one. It's a multi-socket head and it's kind of fat at the end. The skinniest one is this little Phillips head. So you see they're different in size. So normally you would drill a large hole for the big one and a small hole for the small one. But I don't know what the future holds. So I'm going to drill this with all large holes for the screwdrivers so that I can move the screwdrivers around if I get on their set or something, kind of future-proof this a little bit. Uh, we're not going to take the house off-roading, so this isn't going to be doing this. And if it is doing this, that means there's a hurricane overhead and I have other problems in my screwdrivers. So we're going to go with big holes for all these. I'm going to drill smaller holes for the little screwdrivers that are going to go up here for obvious reasons. They'd fall through these. But big holes everywhere so that this guy can live wherever he wants. With all 25 holes laid out so cleanly, it's a simple matter to drill the holes now. So we've got our board with all the holes drilled in it, all set and ready to go. We've got a backer board, which I'll talk about in a second, and we've got our cleat. The cleat's just a piece of scrap that I cut off at the 45 degree angle. It's got a little damage to it, but it's going to be covered by the glue and everything, so I don't care about this. One of the things you want to do when you make these cleats is to sand off the sharp edge. That's because in your shop, sawdust is gonna collect down in here, just a little dust here and there. And if you've got a sharp point here, it's gonna hit that and it may not set properly. So always sand this off so it's flat and there's a little space there so that it locks in and stays put. Even if you get some sawdust or debris in there, you don't wanna go cleaning out these cleats all the time. So this is gonna attach to the back of the board. Now it might flip down, so we're going to put some side pieces on to hold it up, some brackets, and also we're going to put this on for those brackets to attach to, and you see how this 
overlaps two of the cleats. That's so that it doesn't rock forward. So we're going to attach this to this and this to this and then put our cross pieces. That way it's, it's going to be strong. It'll hold its position really well. We'll be able to pull our screwdrivers out. We're also going to put a cleat behind it so that it won't ride up. And I'll show you that later. But first, let's glue this together. But wait, why glue this? Well, because glue is cheap and we have time for this to dry overnight. And if we ever want to get rid of this, we just throw it in the fireplace and burn it. French cleat tool holders require French cleat clamps. Here's those supports I'm talking about, also made from scraps. These will support the tool shelf. Keep it from sagging. The next day. We have 22 screwdriver tips that we want to be easily seen, so we're going to use a magnetic mount to hold them. And the magnets in question are 11 millimeter neodymium magnets. These magnets are super strong, super cheap, and easy to put inside of wood projects. You just drill a hole and insert the magnet and you have yourself a magnetic mount. Six holes are drilled in a piece of scrap for the 12 magnets we're going to be using. These magnets are really strong, so we'll put two magnets in each one of these holes. And that will give us enough magnetic force to easily hold the two screwdriver tip mounts. And then a thin piece of scrap is glued over the top to hold the magnets in and hide them. More French cleat clamps are used. Do we have enough here? The magnets are strong enough to pull each other out of their adjacent holes, so hot glue is used to hold them in place and to keep them from arguing with each other. The glue doesn't really matter because we're going to glue this whole thing down with wood glue. This just keeps the magnets in their holes. Then the completed magnet mount is glued to the back of board on the screwdriver holder below the level where the small screwdrivers are going to stick out. We're going to put this on the wall and load it up. Now, on the back of it, it's got the French cleat as well as a runner through here that is going to keep it from being pulled up and out because screwdrivers you pull up and if you get a screwdriver caught on this you could pull this whole mount off the wall so let me show you how we fix that hangs like this and then we take a little piece of scrap wood and insert it across the back and now this isn't going to come off it's perfectly safe to stay and it'll hold its position. And if I ever want this little piece of wood out, I do this, and it comes right off the wall. So keep that in mind if you ever want to make a French cleat holder that stays put for upward pressure. And not that many French cleats require this. But for this one, we're going to do it. That's it, that's our French cleat screwdriver holder built from scrap wood, holds 25 screwdrivers plus 22 screwdriver tips, so a whole lot of screwdrivers in one place. It's not going to come off the wall and I can move it wherever I want. In fact, I've already moved it. We used to keep our screwdrivers at the miter saw table, which is behind you over there. But we have a workbench over here and this is where we do work, the workbench. Miter saw tables where we cut wood. So we move the screwdrivers over here, we're actually going to use them. But that's what you can do when you have French cleats. It's whatever you need it to be. You can move things around to store them where you need them, even if you need to move things for a specific project. Pull it off the wall, move it, it's all set, and no one can judge you for that. Thanks to our patrons, you make this sort of thing possible. We couldn't do it without your help, so thank you very much. Of course, we use these tools to build other things, and we're going to make videos about those, but for these, we're going to have a bunch of videos showing you how we built each one of our individual French cleat holders. All cheap, all easy, all things you can do and should do if you want to organize your shop. i got to tell you, you move a lot faster when your shop is organized. I wish I'd done that 20 years ago because I wasn't organized. But if you like this sort of thing and you want to see more, like, subscribe, ring that bell so that you won't miss any of our updates because we do a bunch of them. And we'll show you as we build more of this stuff, plus weird things. We build weird things. That's all I got today, though. See you next time.